Good. So good morning everybody, I'm speaking mainly, well I'm speaking to all of you, it's great to be back at All Saints, but I'm speaking also to people who are joining us uh, from wherever in their own homes. We are here in All Saints, we've cracked the uh, microphone system for the choir, so this week you'll be able to hear the choir singing as well. Our worship is going to begin in a few minutes at around 10 o'clock. It's the third Sunday of Advent. It's the service of joy in, uh, in our calendar. And so please join us for worship at around 10 o'clock. And as we prepare, the choir will continue to sing for us.
Okay, let me better start again. Very briefly, it'll be very brief, and then, I'll, then I will greet you in the name of the Father. So, welcome to everybody here in All Saints and uh, wherever you are in your homes. Third Sunday of Advent, and we're here to worship God in All Saints Harrow Weald. And so, dear congregation and people, wherever you are, I greet you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Uh, let's say our bidding prayer and then we'll sit down. Let's pray together as we are here worshipping God together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated. The third Sunday of Advent, also known uh, uh, as Gaudete Sunday, uh, Joy Sunday. It's approximately halfway through Advent. And in a good Lenten tradition, Mothering Sunday and Gaudete, there is a small break in the penitence and the fasting if people are keeping the, the fast of the, uh, the smaller Lent. And so that's why I'm wearing pink. The symbol of joy, and that's why our third candle is pink. Really sorry, Holly, I can't ask you, but we're not allowed to have people moving around, so I'm going to do it for us all. So I take the light from the Paschal candle. And we light our third candle, I hope. It has the world's shortest wick. You talk among yourselves, you say, <laughs> entertain yourselves. It's not going to work. I'm going to ask my tech, one, a technical assistant, could somebody go to the, uh, the vicar's vestry? There are some more pink candles in the cupboard, uh, upper cupboard nearest the window, straight ahead. And I will try again. The children of Israel waited thousands of years for this light to appear. And the tragedy is, when it did, they didn't recognize it. We have a tiny light, but it's a symbol of the joy that is going to fill the world at Christmas time. We've managed. Yeah. I want to make sure it's going to continue to, to burn, and then we'll say a prayer of blessing. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we light this candle, 
as a symbol of joy, we pray that our hearts may indeed be filled with joy as we prepare ourselves to welcome once again the birth of a child, a son, a Messiah, a Saviour. And so, Lord, may we be joyful in our worship, joyful in our prayer, and joyful in our living, sharing your light in the world in which we live. Amen. Right, I leave the world's smallest candle burning. And now, let's see if we can be more penitent than the size of that flame. Let's remember that as we come to worship God, we've come from the world, and so inevitably we are living in the world, and that means we are not perfect. So let's remember and give thanks that when the Lord comes, he'll bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Some simple statements. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray. Our collect for this, the third Sunday of Advent. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll have our first reading. My brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading from the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? 
He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Who are you? A question asked twice in our Holy Gospel reading this morning. And we're told that the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? I'm reminded of the the old, it's a true story and I've told it before, but I'll quickly tell it again because it fits in precisely with the context of our text this morning about the blacksmith from Great Smeaton near North Allerton whose name was Sample and who got very drunk one night and the local policeman found him in the street very much the worse for wear. And it was dark and there were no street lights and he said, who are you? Who is it? And he said, I'm Sample of Smeaton. And the policeman said, well, if you're the Sample, I hate to see the rest of the village. Why is that relevant? Apart from being, it's true, but it's not a very funny joke. But why is it relevant? He was Sample. I, knew, I know his son, and I know his grandson, still acting as blacksmiths near North Allerton. That was his name. That's who he was. What the policeman was saying was, if what he was, was the sample for the village, indeed it was a very poor sample. And so, the message from the Holy Gospel this morning is it's not so much for us as individuals who we are, it's what we are, which is important in the sight of God. Now, when John was asked who he was, it's interesting that he gave examples of what he wasn't, but one of the things that he denied, in fact, what he he didn't deny, and the, the Holy Gospel makes it really clear, it says he didn't deny, he confessed. In other words, he told it in a way that this is the absolute truth. I am not the light. So what is he not? Not the light. He's not the Messiah. He's not Elijah. He denied it three times. He confessed it even three times. And then when they came again and asked the second time, so then who are you? His answer was to quote from the uh, the Bible, from the, the Torah. At that time, of course, there was no New Testament. There was simply the Torah. And he said, I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. So, he's not the light, but he is a voice. Not the voice, that's a TV program, but a voice. A voice crying out in the wilderness. He's a voice, a messenger. That's what He was. Who was he? He was John, also known as the Baptist, because he baptized people in the Jordan. But that's not important of itself. Anybody 
could go and stand in the Jordan and duck people under the water. Anybody. So it wasn't important that he was a Baptist. What was important was that he was a voice, a messenger, telling people, warning people to prepare the way of the Lord. And so John was emphasizing, John the uh, gospel writer was emphasizing that John the Baptist is not the message, he was the messenger. And so his role was to ensure that he is, would be open when the message arrived. Of course, the message was Jesus. And that is what the Pharisees and the people in the established church found so difficult, even impossible, to understand and accept. They've been waiting so long that when it actually happened, they missed it. So, who are you? I'm saying that it's not so important for us to uh, work out who we are. It's really interesting. Nick Olton's done a, a family history for me. It's incredibly interesting. Yeah, for about 15 generations of farmers from North Yorkshire. Very interesting for me, but not for anybody else. That's not important, who we are. It's what we are. So let's move forward thinking about what are we? What have we got to say for ourselves? That's what John would say. Yeah, speak up, lad. What have you got to say for yourself? If you're not Elijah, if you're not the Messiah, what have you got to say for yourself? Stand the messenger. And he gave his message. So let's move away from John and move to the epistle. Paul's letter to the Thessalonian church. Yeah, so let's start with who was Paul. Paul, won in one of his other letters, told them very simply who he was. He said, yeah, I come from an incredibly uh, privileged society. I'm a Roman citizen. I'm a Pharisee. I know all the rules and laws of the church. He said he was, he was dedicated more than others. He was going around the region, arresting people, even having them put to death for believing in the way. That's who he was. And the point he made was what he was is much more important because he changed from being the one who was persecuting Christians to being another messenger, to becoming a man of faith, an apostle, another sharer, this time, of the good news. Because John came before Christ, he was preparing the way for the Lord, and Paul and the other apostles were charged to share the good news all over the world. And as evidence of how they did it, we have the epistles to churches in different areas. So, in today's reading, Paul says beautiful words. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And here we tie into joy. If we're joyful, we want to rejoice. We want to be happy. We want to share our happiness. And that means sharing it with others and giving thanks to God. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. That might seem a strange message to be sharing in the middle of a penitential season, in the middle of Advent, but remember, we're at the halfway point. Gaudete, rejoice, be joyful. And that's exactly what Paul is encouraging the people of the Church of Thessalonia to do, to rejoice, to pray, and to give thanks in all circumstances. That's the full message he shared, three parts to it. Rejoice always, Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Now, always, without ceasing, in all circumstances, sound pretty similar in English, but there are three different and specific Greek words used in the original writing. Always really means that in the Greek. It means always, at all times, every second. So rejoice every second. Pray without ceasing, that is a quality of prayer which is Constant, faithful, settled. So again, it's a way of living as automatic as breathing. Praying becoming as automatic as breathing in and out. And then at all times, en panti, that means in every single thing that happens, in every circumstance. And just one last word about that. When we say give thanks in all circumstances, 
That's actually not so easy to do. But Paul says, in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. You know, let's, uh, I'll give a very si simple example. thanks for that. So in all circumstances, there's a possibility to give thanks to God. Not for all circumstances, in all circumstances. And so we move to drawing it all together. And there's a beautiful poem which was written by uh, Malcolm Geet, who is a priest in uh, uh, one of the colleges in Cambridge, Anglican priest. And he wrote a poem about John the Baptist. Beginning here, we glimpse the three in one. The river runs, the clouds are torn apart. The Father speaks, the Spirit and the Son reveal to us the single loving heart that beats be be behind the being of all things and calls and keeps and kindles us to light. The dove descends, the Spirit soars and sings. You are beloved, you are my delight. And in that quick light and fire as water spills and streams around the man like quickening rain, the voice that made the universe reveals the God in man who makes it new again. He calls us too to step into that river, to die and rise and live and love forever. Who are you? Who are we? Who am I? What are we? The challenge for us to be able to be sharers of joy is that we need to have the, the faith to step into the river, to die, to rise, and live and love forever. Rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances. If we can do those three things, then indeed we can be joyful on this third Sunday in Advent. <laughs> and now I invite you to, to stand and confess your faith in Almighty God, in the words of the I fear we have some Chinese batteries in the vestry. I put new batteries in before the service started, so I apologise. Okay, let's confess our faith in Almighty God. I will turn with you. Let us say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us pray for the church and for the world and let us give thanks to God for his goodness. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we worship you this morning, we pray that filled with joy, we may share your light wherever we are and whoever we are with. May we indeed give thanks in all things Pray ceaselessly and live and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we give you thanks that we're able to worship again in this, your house. We thank you also that we can continue to worship wherever we are. Let us learn from this time that it is not important where we are or who we are. What is important is what we are and what we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for our Church of England. We pray for our Archbishops, Justin and Stephen. And we pray for Bishop Sarah and Bishop Pete in our diocese. And we pray that as we in all the churches of this country and indeed around the world prepare to celebrate Christmas in a very different way, Lord guide us so that we will share your light in a way that is safe, that is sensible and which is truly worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the world in which we live. At this time of grave importance for the future of how our country is and defines itself. We pray for our government. We pray for the leaders of the European Commission and of their member states. We pray that the decisions that will be made will be for the good of all, not the few. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we turn to our personal prayers. We give you thanks for all that we have and pray that we may show our thankfulness in the joy that we share with others. But at the same time, we remember those who are much less fortunate than we are. And we pray that your peace may surround them. And in our lives, there are always, as well as the bad things, there are good things. And this morning, we give thanks for the marriage of James and Sarah Watts from our congregation. We ask your blessing upon them and pray that their lives together may be rich and full of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. But still we remember those who are sick, who are feeling low at this time. There are some that are known only to us and we share in our hearts and commend them to you for your care and for your love. From our parish list, we pray for Roger Siswick, for Kevin Briody, Jane Slade, Emma Foss, Claire Rording, Laura Baker, Janice Glasser, Margaret Vintner, Doris Weed, and we pray for Joanno, Floria and Mate as they prepare to return from South Africa to resume their lives in Romania. 
May your Holy Spirit surround all of them. May they feel peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we remember those who we've known and loved who are no longer with us. We give you thanks that we had the privilege to be part of their lives, to be loved by them and to be given an example by them of how to show joy in our lives. We pray that their rest with you may be eternal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The peace of God be always with you and also with you. Let's wave to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And to those of you who are following from your homes, peace be with you, shared from the congregation of all saints. And now we prepare the table for the Eucharist. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever and ever, praising you and, say and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. blood of Christ. And now I invite those who are following the service from home to say the prayer of spiritual communion. I will come around to you distributing the communion in one kind. If you don't wish to uh, receive, please just keep your hands down. If you do wish to receive, hold out your hands and I will drop the wafer into your hands.
and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ come again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And now I invite those at home to say the prayer for mercy. As we pray together in all saints, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and with those who you love wherever they may be, today and always. Amen.
It's wonderful to be back, and but for me to be back in England, Ella and I, and for us all to be back here in All Saints. Let's wait and see where we will be uh, after this coming week. As you, those of you who read the newsletter will know, I've set out a, a planned program for Christmas worship, and we must wait and see what will be, if there will be any changes in both our tier status and in government and Church of England guidelines for worship before we can define exactly what we will do. We will celebrate Christmas. I can promise you Christmas is not cancelled in All Saints. It will happen. How we will celebrate it, we will see. We will do our best to make it as, as inclusive as we possibly can. So please do keep in contact and follow any messages which uh, are sent out for us to know what will be uh, going on. So uh, certainly there will be online live stream worship on Tuesday morning, morning prayer, and by the grace of God, we'll be here in church on Wednesday for a service of said communion at 11.30. Thereafter, we will make a definite decision as soon as we are able. Um, one of the message, uh, it's great that Graham is here because I don't have, I'm the arbiter of the cathedral's quiz and uh, I've been very good. I haven't entered myself, Graham, but I do need to see you or have a message from you in a moment with the, the correct answers. So there's two more days if you want to. I've got quite a number of, uh, of entries have been received through the, um, uh, through the letterbox at the vicarage, plus one by the internet from Ghana. Uh, and David Smith, by the way, sends his greetings to everybody. I was able to see him in his 48 hours in the country, and he says hi to everybody and really hopes that next year he'll be able to worship with us in person as well as uh, online. So two more days to enter the cathedral quiz, and then the lucky winner will receive a, a, Christmas, a Christmas delight prize. I think those are the only notices. Uh, for me, it was wonderful not only to hear the choir, but to know from checking on Facebook that they were being heard, the beauty of their singing and uh, Diane's playing was being heard by people uh, around the world as well. Um, it shows that we have to be careful about everything. You know, the, uh, the batteries failed on my mic, and that meant that probably some of it wasn't audible uh, via the internet. We're learning, we're learning as we go and we're doing our best. And thank you everybody for being so um, sympathetic and supportive as we swim in uncharted waters. Let us swim in uncharted waters with joy uh, on our faces. John, will there be coffee this morning? Yes, thumbs up. So uh, if anybody wants to join uh, the uh, virtual coffee morning, that will be possible. At three o'clock this afternoon, there will be an online uh, Chris Dingle service, so available either by Facebook or by YouTube. Sadly, we can't do it in person. So that'll be three o'clock this afternoon, there'll be virtual worship. So now, wherever you're going to be, whoever you're going to be with, probably not many people at the moment, but whatever you're going to be doing in these days, the final days of Advent as we approach the celebration of the birth of our Lord, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.